We are still up at the Gemi Pass at an elevation of about seven and a half thousand feet, doing some snow photography. And the Daubensee, the lake up on the Gemi Pass, is one of those places that is as beautiful in summer as it's in winter. And whereas you see a lot of downhill skiing in the Swiss Alps, here you actually won't see much of that, but instead there are three other main activities. First of all, the whole frozen surface of the lake has been prepared with runs for cross-country skiers. <laughs> Believe me, some of them are really old school. It's beautiful to watch. And then there are kids together with their parents having a ton of fun on sledges. And you'll also find people like us doing hikes. Whoa, careful. Uh, photography out here in winter is so much fun, but there are just a few things that can really help you. One is a polarizer. Again, I keep this with me all the time for my most important lenses. And um, let me put that on. Now, even with a polarizer, I always want to have my lens hood on. Lens hood, especially in, in glare situations like this, just helps you to keep glare out, to keep the sun away from the lens. Uh, some of the polarizers have a little thing sticking out that helps you turn them, and you have to turn them in order to maximize their impact, but um, those that don't come with this really work well with lens hoods, and you can still turn it. You can see this. If you want to maximize the impact of a polarizer, make sure to be 90 degrees from the sun, so the sun is on your left or on your right, and then turn it and you'll see the sky go really blue. Now with a blue sky like this, today we, it's just amazing, the sky, uh, you almost don't need a polarizer, but um, we'll just maximize it even more and make everything a bit more crisp and a bit more saturated. By the way, a real fun thing that uh, can also happen to you, um, the glasses I'm wearing are polarizing glasses. The LCD, the display on the back of your camera also uses a polarizing filter on it. And if you have two polarizers, the glasses and the filter, and you turn them against each other, it's easily possible that this thing turns black because light can't come through anymore. So make sure if you don't see much in a display in the snow, to take off your glasses, look at it, and you'll see that the image is back. And then As you can see, there's quite a bit of a chilly wind up here, um, which is nothing unusual because we're high in the Swiss Alps on top of the Daubensee, that's a lake. Um, there's nothing to break the wind and um, it's not only chilly, it also runs on your battery. Uh, your batteries dramatically lose capacity in areas that cold. I should actually wear gloves, but then I can't really feel the camera, so I'd rather stick my hands in inside here somehow. Um, one thing I typically do is I take, in cold conditions, I take batteries with me, spare batteries, and oh, I, I, hate to do, I hate to do this here, but I take them close to my body, so I actually have to open this up here. Uh, keeping them co close to your body helps keep them warm and helps keep, keep their capacity. And when you then switch them out, you can actually put those back in there, those cold ones, and they regain a bit of capacity so you can uh, squeeze a bit more out of them. And then, yeah, you're ready to take more pictures. Ugh. And that was it from the Swiss Alps. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're interested, the two weeks up here in Switzerland and specifically the photography that came out of that has made it into a photo book. More information on that in the end credits and on the tips from the Top Floor website.